Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here. Today we're talking of the infamous feud between the Lion and the Wolf, Lion L. Johnson and Lehman Russ, and how maybe the future is not going to be quite as we expected. General spoiler warning to begin as the events we're discussing today are from across the Warhammer 40k universe, so you have been warned. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. So Lion L. Johnson and Lehman Russ, one of the most infamous Primarch rivalries, a feud that has echoed down for 10,000 years, symbolically replayed over whenever their future sons would meet. The Knight versus the Barbarian, the clash of fire and ice. Ever since I began my journey into the lore as a kid, the duel between these two brothers has existed. In the legendary 2nd edition Angels of Death Codex, there is a story titled The Lion and the Wolf, and though particular details may have changed slightly over the years, such as only the Lion and Horus having more crusade victories than Russ, the duel itself has largely remained the same. It takes place on the world of Julan, where Russ would strike El Johnson for betraying his brother, slaying the warlord he knew Russ had vowed to end. The duel would end with Russ breaking into a laugh, and El Johnson punching him out cold. Fast forward a couple of decades and we got our first real look at this fabled event. In Lehman Russ's Primark series novel, Lehman Russ the Great Wolf. Here the narrative remained true to that decades old history. The events honouring the legend, yet giving us the reality of the emotion. The clash of pride and egos developing and expanding what we know of the Julan campaign. However, the novel wouldn't just stay there, it would take a step further, giving us a glimpse of the brothers' future in the aftermath of the heresy. In the wake of the Emperor's internment upon the Golden Throne, Lehman Russ would return to terror, becoming overwhelmed with grief at the sight of his father upon the throne. And there's a particular line that sums it all up. He was exhausted, burned out by Yarrant and the furious, desperate race to reach the hearth world in time. Then, the horror of his discovery. Now Yarrant was the near destruction of the Space Wolves Legion. After Russ's gambit against Horus, Wounding the War Master with the Emperor's Spear, the Wolves of Fenris were pursued by a combination of traitor legions, where they were only saved from destruction by the arrival of Korax and the Raven Guard. And it's worth noting that Russ was still within a coma during this time. So, this line certainly gave the impression or at least I should say gave me the impression that Russ, after awakening from the coma, began the race for terror. He was exhausted, burned out by Yarrant, and then the furious, desperate race to reach the hearth world in time. And it wasn't only this that had me feeling this way, for upon laying eyes on his father on the throne, Lehman Russ, in that grief, flees from the sight of it, consumed with the loss of his father, eventually blacking out somewhere within the depths of the palace. During this slumber, his father would speak to him, informing him of his duty to defend the Imperium. And when Russ would awake, his brother Lion L. Johnson was standing over him. The lion equally within the throes of grief, overwhelmed and perhaps unable to process them in any real way, can only focus his anger at his brother Russ, bringing up their duel on Julan, how it was never finished, left undone. And again, 
this gives you the sense that they hadn't met since. In particular, the lines. You left, said Russ. He had no stomach for sparring. When I woke up, you were gone. And the line. The lion's face contorted in a fury, driven by his unspeakable grief. You never learned, he cried. You should have been faster. It was your pride that kept you in the void. And this all ends with the lion driving his sword into a refusing to fight Russ. The Wolf King would reflect that this ended the bad blood. After this, they could speak again. The established lion and the wolf ending. An embittered rivalry turned into a friendship. Admittedly, not likely one for long, considering it appears the lion will disappear before Gilliman's Codex Astartes is implemented. And I'm expecting before he's even anointed as Lord Commander, as I don't think that would go down well with L. Johnson. But either way, we'll see. However, recently, over the past few months, we've had some more information come to light regarding the Lion's campaign against the traitors, whilst the Siege of Terror was taking place. Back within issue 478 of the White Dwarf magazine, as part of the Fate of Barbarous campaign, we were given a timeline of events. And here, we were told that Lion L. Johnson's fleet arrived at the Kiavar system, the home of the Raven Guard. And most importantly, that Lion L. Johnson reunited with his brothers Korax and Lehman Russ. It also states that the Lion questions Korax for the seeming absence of the Raven Guard throughout the heresy, and that his suspicions are only put to rest by Russ, who informs him that it was Korax and the Raven Guard who came to his Legion's aid. Russ, now fully healed, joins the Lion's Crusade of Vengeance, and Korax, not quite as willing, commits resources and only a small number of troops. They then together continue to prosecute the campaign, ultimately leading to the Siege of Barbarus. Now this for me was a big shock when I read it, as it really counteracts or changes what I'd long believed and felt. That Russ and the Lion wouldn't reunite, at least in any real way, until that fateful moment within the palace, in the aftermath of the Siege of Terror. However now, here, we have them having face-to-face -face conversations upon deliverance, within Korax's fortress monastery. And not only that, prosecuting the campaign together afterwards. Now, I wouldn't say this is necessarily a retcon, as it was more implied or inferred perhaps that Russ raced to Terra when he could. Again, he was exhausted, burned out by Yarrant, and then the furious, desperate race to reach the Hearth world in time. Again, it doesn't explicitly state he didn't go on a campaign, it's more just the way it comes across. And the same for the argument with the lion within the palace. Particular for me, the lion's line of, You should have been faster. It was your pride that kept you in the void. Knowing now that Russ was with the lion doesn't seem to make that comment make much sense. Nor the I woke up and you were gone line from Russ which really has the feeling of only now just seeing each other. Now we can forgive the lion here, because he is speaking whilst being completely consumed by his grief. As anyone in a deeply painful time, it's not uncommon to lash out and vent, which is exactly what the lion is doing. Again, as we said earlier, if any Primarch was going to do that, You'd expect it to be L. Johnson, 
who's famously had a hard time coming to term with his emotions. However, that said, it does feel like a bit of a change to me. A bit of a development on a grey area within the heresy. And so it does have me wondering if we could see a change to the Lion and Russ's relationship moving forward. Could we see them burying the hatchet upon deliverance? As seems to be the case. Could we see the aftermath of the heresy play out differently? If we do see it covered again, it will most likely be one of the earliest installments of the Scouring series. As I could be wrong, but I believe the heresy will end with the Emperor's ascension to the throne. Everything thereafter coming under the Scouring. Perhaps we'll see this moment revisited, playing out slightly differently. A lion viewpoint instead. Probably not, but it's interesting to consider. It definitely makes me want to see a story covering the meeting upon deliverance, seeing the three brothers reunite, what is said in those conversations and how it comes across. As much as I love Lehman Russ the Great Wolf and that scene in the palace in particular, it would be good to get a little more of Russ and the Lion on good terms before the end. Especially given the Lion will disappear most likely very quickly within the scouring. But regardless, change or no change, there definitely appears to have been a development in the Lion and the Wolf story. And it remains to be seen how much. But as always everyone, what do you think? Do you see this as a bit of a change to the established Lion and the Wolf storyline? Are you surprised by the development? Do you see it as a good thing? Or like me, do you see it as a bit of a surprise? That given what we had seen of their meeting upon Terra, you didn't expect them to meet again before then. Would you like to see the Lion's campaign, and thus the meeting upon Deliverance, receive its own novel? Or would you like to see simply this reunion covered within a short story? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. With that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.